That's our house band. And then there's you. Feel into the integrity of your own soul. Feel that you are one with the source. Feel that that power and that, and that magnificence of the spirit is rolling through you right now. Feel in this instant that you are significant, that you are not a, a question mark, but that you are an exclamation point for the spirit. That you have arrived here on the planet for such a time as this to reflect and to reveal the cosmos in a way that has never, ever happened before. Begin to feel your way into that dynamic and allow for the debris of the mind and the virus of the mind, which is fear and doubt and worry, to begin to be dissolved. As you're entering into this strange attractor field known as Agape International, strange attractor simply means that it's outside of your present paradigm and it is pulling you into dimensions of your own being that heretofore you may not be participating in. So you enter into a strange attractor field, a higher vibrational field that you may come in resonance with the feeling tone of the sacred music, the dynamic prayer and affirmations, the wonderful fellowship that's happening throughout the globe so that you can begin through spiritual practice to stabilize this particular field that appears to be outside of yourself. It is not until you're carrying your, your, the, the, your own etheric vibration everywhere that you go, regardless of what's happening on the globe, regardless of what's happening in the world. This is what you are to be about, to become so strong that you're able to walk on the planet with your own atmosphere, regardless of the atmospheric pressures that are happening through humanity. And that's called freedom. So you've come into this strange attractor field. You come into this metaphysical spiritual community, this mystical community, to be reminded of who and what you really are, that you may become anchor points of the continuing unfolding revelation of let there be light and beauty and love everywhere so that this incarnation as Jackie Simonelli was singing earlier about not allowing our life to be lived in vain. So this incarnation is not a life where you have been dulled into forgetfulness about your true nature and being. But that this incarnation is about awakening and awakening and awakening and awakening and delivering your spiritual gifts. And the generosity of the spirit through and as you in ways that are transcending your conscious awareness until your conscious awareness expands and embraces it. This month we've been dealing with the theme of your ship is coming in. Oops, have you sent one out? And we've been reminding you, I'm using the universal royal we, presence of God as me, as we, as us. We've been reminding you that your ship is perpetually coming in, that the blessings are always happening. Eternally, God is always a being God. And so the question is, are we vibrationally prepared? One must be prepared. Are we vibrationally prepared to absolutely accept and receive the blessings that are being bestowed upon us moment by moment by moment? Every single week I've said, be, 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 besieged by blessings. Now the spirit of God. And though consciously your mind may be in a rut of thinking, when am I going to be blessed? When is my ship going to come in? When is the good going to happen? Or assigning your happiness to some time way in the future when my mortgage is paid off, when my car note is paid off, when I have a job, when I find the right person, then I'll be happy. No, that's living life backwards. That's an old paradigm. Cause and effect. Oh, when this happens, then I'll be happy. No, 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 no. Your ship has come in. You are doing your spiritual work to be vibrationally prepared to receive and accept, embrace, and stabilize the blessings that are coming and that are here, right here in this moment, you see. And so how do you prepare yourself? This month I've been reminding you, you got to send some ships out. You have to get in the habit of sending ships out. 
I was reading on my Instagram page uh, this week where one individual was saying uh, that after hearing me speak, she started sending little love notes to people that she hadn't been in contact with a, a while because of, uh, the vi because of the vibration of the lockdown of healthy people that she has not seen certain people in a while, but they were on her mind, so she, and they lived in different parts of the country, so she just started sending out these notes of love notes. I miss you. I love you. And saying words of encouragement, putting a couple of dollars in there just, just as a reminder. And she said that the torrent of love that began to come back to her from these people and others was something she wasn't expecting, but it felt so good to her heart. She sent some ships out that made people's day, and in turn, acts of love began to come in her direction. Are you sending ships out? One lady on Instagram, I think it was a lady, could have been a man, but he said, he or she said, that after hearing my talk, he remembered, or she remembered her father saying to her growing up, sometimes you're going to have to swim out to your ship. Because <laughs> he was teaching his, his children that your ship is coming in, but sometimes you've got to swim out to your ship. Uh, meaning that sometimes you're going to have to take action. And that action is, based, is called divine right action. It's based upon you being in concert with uh, wisdom and guidance and discernment and intelligence flowing through you in a language in a way that you can understand that, that is built within you, that receptivity is built within you as you lean into wisdom, lean into intelligence, which is God itself through your spiritual practices of affirmative prayer, sacred meditation, life visioning, fellowship, study, and all the ways that are provided in a spiritual community with heart. So your ship is here. As I was saying in the early morning service, life is glorious, it's magnificent, but there are so many people who can't see it. They are blind to that reality. Humanity suffers from the inability to see reality. Humanity suffers because they're experiencing their thoughts about reality, but they're not having a direct contact with reality consciously. Everything is predicated upon you awakening through spiritual practice. And so today our topic is going from playful to play flow. I'm, I just captured something in my mind in my book, Spiritual Liberation. I coined a phrase called plevolving. Playvolving. Evolving of the soul through playing. And I was reminded of two particular experiences. One, an individual, a great metaphysical teacher uh, uh, that wrote the Abundance book and things like that. Yeah, I'm, I'm blocking his name for just a moment, but it'll come to me. And he was sharing the story of the time in which his wife uh, made her transition in front of him. And uh, he, uh, he was distraught. He was crying. You know, she, she had passed over. On the other side, where she was, she was being entrained by these spiritual teachers and angels. And they were teaching her a whole lot of things. And one of the things that they taught her was that the vibration of praying and the vibration of playing were very similar. And, and then they asked her, well, do you want to go back? Because she could see her husband crying. And, and um, Randolph Price, that was his name. <laughs> Just, Thank you, Randolph, for talking to me. And, 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 and she was like ambivalent because she was having such a great time in the afterlife, <laughs> which was more life. You know, hanging out with these beings and her friends and her family and her soul connections and all the... And she's like, she sees her husband crying and she's there in this expanded consciousness. She's unfettered by the body. She's like, oh, okay, I'll go back, you know. So she, she comes back to the body temple and she tells Randolph, hey, playing and praying have a very similar vibration. We got to add more play to our frequency. And then I'm thinking about the time I stayed at the Shaolin Temple in China working with the, uh, the monks there, and I can, you know, they would wake up every morning at 4 o'clock, and you'd hear them out there oming and meditating and then doing their particular processes, and it was a very beautiful, insightful time I had with them because I worked with the Gung Fu monks, but I also worked with the, the, the monk that was over healing and herbs and very, very powerful beings. And so one day, a basketball game broke out, and... These guys were running up and down the court, 
oh, the offense was superb. The defense was masterful. And there was a guy named Lucky from America with us. He was a professional ball player. He played in Europe. Uh, he, was, he was the tallest on the court. He was 6'4", six, 6'5", six, or something like that. But all of the Chinese individuals were, you know, 5'6", five, 5'7", five, five, And they're running up and down the court, and they're playing, playing, playing. I mean, it was, a, it was a torrid, passionate game. And then suddenly, they just all stopped and went to lunch. <laughs> just all of them, just all. And Lucky standing on the court like, what, what happened? Uh, who won? How many points? And he's asking. And they said, oh, we don't keep score. We just play. We, we, we just play. But they were playing every single play as if it was the most important play. And then it was over. They just all went to lunch. And so in the Western concept was like, we got to play to win. Who won the game? Who had more points? And they were just playing. And so we want to understand that we're coming out of the Kali Yuga age at this particular point in terms of the epics of the thousands of years that the earth is in a particular cycle around the sun. And the Kali Yuga age is when we're further from the central sun. So the individuals have a, uh, there's a, there's a rising of a sense of dullness of the mind and negativity and fear, doubt and worry, greed and things of that particular nature. And then as that particular age ends and we're closer to the central sun, then there's this age of enlightenment for thousands of years. Now, understand this. Regardless of the age you're in, you can create your own atmosphere. You don't have to get caught into the dullness of, of worry, doubt, fear, greed, and survival. You can have your own expanded awareness as an astronaut and be in a particular age or epic and not be affected by it. I have to say that with such passion because individuals sometimes make excuses about their past or excuses about whatever age they're living in and say, this is the why I'm feeling this way. Forget about it. You're a spiritual astronaut that gets to carry your own atmosphere. And so as we're moving into this age, it is the age of love and the age of playing. I'm not talking about frivolity. I'm talking about when you understand that prayer and play have the same frequency. Remember when you were a child and if you didn't have a lot of scar tissue, you could just play without having the object of winning. You're just playing with your friends. Just, it was a, just a moment of playing without an attachment to an outcome. And so there was a lot of joy, a lot of creativity. You made up games. You created games on the spot. You created rules on the spot. You were just playing, you see? And then as one began to be serious with life, and then one had objects, one had to be on the winning team, one had to be better than other people, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We want to move into a state in which, like prayer and real playing, we are plevolving. We're, we're hanging in a state of play that leads us to a state of grace. In other words, the isness and the givingness of the spirit is no longer inhibited by the conscious mind's search of survival. We're now in a state of grace of which the life and the beauty and the love of God to get to express through us. Now, here's the deal. Love, peace, joy, wisdom, harmony, happiness are intrinsic. However, you have to develop the muscle for it. It's already within you. Happiness is there. Peace is there. Love is there. Joy is there. Abundance is there. But you have to develop the muscle, the spiritual muscle for it. This is why we have spiritual practice, so that you can be in the vicissitudes of the human dimension with this political polarization, with the new word that has, uh, has, a, that has emerged in our culture now, which is called greedflation. People used to always talk about inflation, but many of the economists are now sharing with us that there's no, re there's no real reason, economic reason, for many of the... Uh, rises in prices that when you under when you uh, they go deep into the understanding of the ebbs and flows of our economic cycles that for many in many reasons there's no reason to raise a price but because they can they do so it's called greedflation so as we're living in this society where there's inflation, there's greedflation, there's polarization, there's fear, doubt, and worry, the vicissitudes of the human experience, you can actually be in this world but develop the muscles of happiness and joy and live in your own atmosphere but you want to come into an awareness of that you are moving through life playing at whatever you're doing, so that you come into a state of 
reverence. Now, here's the challenge. As I was saying earlier, people assign their happiness often to something in the future. When X, Y, and Z happens, then I'll be happy. The other thing that people do is they are unaware that their mental and emotional habits are driving their, their experiences. And they incorrectly think that that person is making me unhappy or that situation is, is getting on my nerves or that thing over there is determining my emotional content. And oftentimes it's exactly the opposite. It's the mental habit that was developed during a time in our life when we had certain experiences, we didn't have the capacity to analyze those experiences intellectually or spiritually. So they became imprinted subjectively, imprinted emotionally. And then we move through life with those mental habits that create emotions and moods that become cyclical. And they serve us whenever it is something that we don't like. Then that particular mood or that particular uh, mental habit jumps up. Up to serve and says, oh, I don't like them. I don't like that. I don't like that. And in fact, all that power is now being given away to an external circumstance where inside we are pure joy. We are pure beauty. We are pure intelligence and pure love. And when we can examine ourselves, unexamined life, you know what they say about that. When we can examine ourselves and have a deep sense of inquiry and self-reflection, we can begin to take back our power and instead of allowing cyclical moods and habitual thoughts to determine our emotions, determine our perceptions, determine our experiences, we can look at it and make a different choice. Now, choice is a function of expanded awareness. So again, going back to developing the spiritual muscles, there must be a dimension of spiritual practice that we invite into our life on a regular basis so that we are not run by our past, we're not run by cyclical thought patterns, we're not run by those cyclical thought patterns that become emotional content that then are projected onto the screen called the future that allows us, one, to delay our good until something good happens in the future, or allows us to just keep on experiencing those particular thoughts, uh, allowing them to just be uh, uh, spewed onto the world of anything that we don't like. I'm not saying you don't give up your preferences. I'm not saying give up your preferences. I'm not saying that. Everyone has preferences as to how they want to experience their life. They have preferences as to the kind of house they want to live in, the kind of car, the kind of clothes they want. Every, we all have a, we have a preference. But we're developing a spiritual muscle that allows us to have a level of joy and harmony and wholeness and the feeling tone of all needs met as our, mm, as our stabilization of that becoming our new norm. Now, you, something within you it may be railing against this. Because you may be saying to yourself, oh no, if I simply become happy and joyful the way things are, then God's going to think that's the way I want them to be all the time. It doesn't work like that, you see. Your ship has come in. Are you vibrationally prepared to receive it? When, in fact, you're able to hold the space and have coherence around joy, around love, around beauty, around harmonizing prosperity. When you, when you begin to work in and upon yourself so that you have that as an awareness and then you walk with that awareness, you will begin to see the coagulated thought forms that have condensed themselves as your experience. You will begin to see that they begin to fade away. They begin uh, to disintegrate. And through the grace of God, you begin to see demonstrations in your life that you're vibrationally prepared for, but still shock and amaze you when they show up. It's a vibrational match. Now, there are physical laws, there are mental laws, and then there's grace. Grace transcends every single law. It transcends your misuse of your mental law. It transcends physical law. 
Grace is God giving this. And, the, and, and in one way that you can access it, as I was exploring the, uh, a couple of nights ago and, and uh, consciously going to sleep and consciously like going and lifting myself into other awareness, other dimension outside the body. And what came to me was God, uh, uh, all as all. And you go into this space of God as all as all, beyond names, beyond God, beyond the word God, because that sometimes has a connotation of a man in the sky or some kind of limited concept of our belief. But this, the all is all. And you begin to open yourself up, all is all. And you come into this state of consciousness, all is all. And then as I did years ago there in Costa Rica, when I was caught in that riptide, you just say something like, as you're in the space of God, all is all. I need a little help here. I'm available for assistance. I'm open to the blessing. I'm here. I'm open to the blessing. I'm open to the blessing. You open yourself up. And then grace, that which is already here. You made yourself available for it to move into your life. And what happens is you begin to operate at a higher frequency. Your, your personal law of availability becomes more expanded. And you become recognized by the universal presence and its law as a prepared vibrational frequency, established individual in this higher frequency, and blessings abound. when your survival dynamic is beginning to supersede your grace ethic. And now you know you've come out of yourself. You've gone from play flow to going against the flow. If you're living primarily from survival and fear of the future, you're going against the flow of life. And though somewhere in your mind you got it all mixed up, oh, I gotta be serious, I gotta make something happen, oh, I gotta survive, you're going against the flow of life. Play flowing. If you're in the flow of life, I'm not saying this is easy, I'm saying it's necessary. And what happens? You go from the seriousness of your conscious mind that has been hijacked by fear into a reverential state of being. You start seeing what looks like tiny miracles everywhere, but there's no large or small in the divine mind that sees all and that is all. And you start to live from a sweet reverential state. You start to transcend the cyclical mind that's looking for negativity and you start to really fall in love with the people that are around you. Whether you like what their personality is doing in any given moment, something happens. So we're moving from being playful to play flow. In the flow of life. Because that part of our brain that's just caught up in fear, doubt, and worry, and survival, it is against the flow. Now here's the beauty about grace, and here's the beauty about expanded awareness. It handles your survival issues. Through Inspired wisdom, transformational knowledge, intuition, gut awareness. Guidance happens. But you're not living your entire life afraid of not enough. Or, no. You don't want to waste your incarnation. You want to develop the muscles to allow your intrinsic nature 
to be set free and then to stabilize that. And what I'm telling you right now, it's not far off fancy thing. It comes through sincere devotion, spiritual practice. And then you notice the change in yourself. As Reverend Joan Stedman once said, when she left the cloister, she was a nun at one point. She said, I broke the habit. <laughs> <laughs> Reverend Joan, I don't know if you're listening or not, but I can remember you. <laughs> I gave up the habit. I broke the habit. You will break the habit of your mind being in worry and fear and controlling your perception and blocking your great destiny. All that you're experiencing for the most part is just habit. I don't care where it came from. Yes, something, some bad things happened. Yes. You couldn't analyze it. You didn't quite know how to assimilate it. So it just became a part of your default emotional subconscious system. But with meditation and prayer, you're able to bring the timeless and eternal and the all as all and reframe your entire existence. It's called spiritual liberation. It's called freedom. This is why we celebrate. This is why we call a service at times a reverential celebration. We're celebrating the presence of God as our life. We're in deep and an abiding fellowship with each other in God. And there's so much to celebrate and be grateful for. If you expand your awareness beyond the small fabric of reality that you're bombarded with every single day through the media giving you information on the lowest common denominator of the human experience. What about all the miracles that are taking place? You might as well ask. Let me see miracles today. I'm open. Let me see blessings today. Let me see the evidence of abundance. Let me see the evidence of joy. Give me the, new, the good news, the gospel. Give me the good news of God being everywhere. I want to see it. I'm available to it. That's what I want to see. Play flow. Your choice. Your choice. Your choice. And then... As the world is splitting, it is vibrationally. You'll be in the flow of a sacred peace, not consternation, hate. Come, come home, come home to yourself. Playful to play flow with the flow of the infinite. Shoo. 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 Let's pray together. Put a smile on your face and just think about a moment in which you were having so much fun any time in your life. You weren't necessarily competing with somebody. You weren't trying to beat somebody down. You weren't trying to be better than somebody. You weren't trying to be superior or inferior to anyone. You were just playing. Just come into a moment like that with me. And enter into this sacred space of such thankfulness for such a moment. Such gratefulness for such a moment. Oh, I'm so thankful. I'm so grateful. I'm so appreciative of my life. In this moment of dynamic celebration, I'm, I'm feeling coherent around the tonal quality that all of my needs are met. In this, in, this instant, I'm not projecting anything into the future. Right now, my need is met. 
I'm in so much joy, so much connection, so much harmony. Oh, I'm thankful. And as we begin to feel our way into this, there is a recognition factor that begins to take over our life. We begin to see, not with eyes necessarily, we begin to hear, not with ears, necessarily. We begin to see the beauty that's everywhere. We begin to hear the sacred, sacred song of the universe. One, 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 one. The celestial sounds become so real to us. We can see what we hear. We can hear what we're seeing. Consciousness is transcending. The physical expressions of our spiritual faculties. I can smell love. I can taste abundance. I can hear light. I can see sound. <laughs> oh, my body is an optic nerve. My eye is single. It's full of light. <laughs> Come with me into the sacred reverential at oneness with the presence. And from this sense of unity and oneness, I have the privilege and it's I always see this as a privilege, an honor to speak the word for each and every one of us today. The sacred word of God, the vibrational frequency of wholeness, and order and harmony and abundance and joy and intelligence. I get to speak the word for each and every one of us knowing there's only one of us expressing as infinite many that we may stand strong ha, in divine wholeness right now. Every organ and every action, every function of the body temple becomes strong enough to carry more cosmic energy for us to do our mission. Our mental body is becoming clearer and clearer. Our emotional body is becoming purer and purer. Our body of affairs are, are reflecting and reveal the fundamental order of the sacred multi-dimensional universe and every single thing is working together for our individual and for our collective good. I speak the word and as many as receives this word, this vibration, this frequency, they receive the power to realize that they are emanations of the cosmic Christ, the sacred Buddha field, the awakened consciousness beyond religiosity into supreme awakening. Now, this is the word that's being spoken. I feel it in my bones. Now, now, just for a second, embrace yourself for a moment and as scripture would say, lift up thine eyes unto the hills from which cometh your help. L lift up your countenance for a moment and, and just embrace yourself and just consider God as the all, the all as all. Transcending names. God is all. Now in this sacred space, simply say, I'm available for any assistance whatsoever for my mission. I'm available right now for any assistance at all. In every area of my life, I'm open. Whether 
whether they all as all comes through the angelic realm whether it comes through the ancestral realm whether it comes through spiritual teachers guides and aids and helpers on this side of the veil or the other whether it's direct knowing divine intuition whether it's inspired wisdom that flows through us whether it's the activation of our oneness with God in which we know everything we need to know just because it's in us and is now activated we just open ourselves up ah, I'm available to the grace in the feeling of sacred connection. My spiritual muscles are becoming so strong I can carry more cosmic energy. Whoop! I feel it. I feel it. Mm. Ooh, I feel it. Give him, a, give him a little feeling tone there, Jamie. A feeling tone. Give it a little feeling tone. I made mistakes, it's true. The ignorance of youth. I dropped a bomb or two. I drank a bit of brew. I've seen what I've been told. But I'm worth more than gold. It's time to break the mold. Yeah, I break the mold. A flower never fails to make me breathe. A river's always seeking out the sea. A mountain climbs as high as it can be. And everything's always reflecting me And everything's always reflecting me Cheated, lied, and stole, but nothing left me whole. Just a corrupted soul on a downward roll. I've seen what I've been told, nothing left me whole. Just a corrupted soul on a downward roll. Flower never fails to make me breathe. A river's always seeking out the sea. A mountain climbs as high as it can be, and everything's always reflecting me. Everything's always reflecting me. Everything is always reflecting back to us our state of consciousness. Ultimately, when deep calls unto deep, deep answers, deep. Take this moment and we consider anybody in our awareness right now that needs a moment of prayer. Bring them into our heart, mind in this instant and we, we don't fret about them. We don't worry about them in this moment. We, we consider that right where they are is the presence of God and, and right action is occurring in their life. Whoever it may be, a friend, family member, an associate, a colleague, someone you know about, shoo, Allow a, a vibrational ship to go forward as a blessing right now for those individuals.